Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel or if it's your first time welcome we have a very exciting small series of videos coming out going over neural machine translation tripped over my words a bit there but this is super exciting we're going to make an app similar to google uh, translate i'm not over exaggerating there it's not quite as maybe good uh, but even with just 30 minutes of training we can get some pretty crazy performance so before we jump into it i can quickly sort of demo what you can expect to get out of this we're going to be going through the engineering a little bit of the theory, how it works. Um, but here's the demo, right? So you have some input text here. We can put in whatever we want. So say this is a test or something along those lines, right? Then this output language, we can choose whatever we want. There are only three here, English, Japanese, and Chinese. Um, the reason I limited it is not because we have some hard cap. It's just, you know, I didn't want to train forever and get a bunch of data. It's just a, you know, it's just a sample project. If you like this though, you could expand it. So this is a test, let's translate that into Japanese. If we run this, let's see what we get. Hopefully not embarrassing me. This is a test, goes to this, kore wa testo de aru. So we can take this and just to prove to you all, I'm, I'm not uh, scamming you. We can have Google Translate right here, paste it in here. This is a test, not too bad. Uh, that's the only example I'm gonna go over now. If you stick through, we'll, we'll do some more. If you make this along with me, you can, uh, you know, you can test this out yourself. By the way, just, uh, before we sort of get started on this, just to let you know, I will have this code all linked in the description, the GitHub, the Google Colab, and also, you know, subscribe to the channel. I'll, I'll be posting updates on this sort of thing. So if this is the sort of thing you like to see, subscribing really helps out and I really appreciate it. So anyway, let's jump on over to a fresh new Google Colab. Starting off with what Google Colab is, if you've never used it before, it's like a Jupyter Notebook sort of thing, but it's hosted by Google. They give you a GPU to use, which is really nice because this does take like a GPU to train. So if you don't have one and you can't do it on your computer, this is one option for you. So that was sort of uh, the demo. Let's talk about an overview. How are we going to do this? What are we going to use? If you haven't done NLP work or natural language processing work before, this might be a little bit confusing, but I'll do my best to sort of make hopefully even you know if, even if you don't have too much prior experience hopefully you can sort of get the gist of it so first thing is the model what model are we using what's going on with this model so the model we're using is called and let me make this into a cell um the model is called mt i believe mt mt i don't know if it's capitalized or not mt5 and this is a sort of more recent model that works really well in a lot of nlp tasks T5 is the original, M is a multilingual version, right? Because we want this to be able to translate from any language to any other language. That's a key feature of Google Translate. So MT5 is the model. I actually have the paper up. Is this the paper? Yeah, I have the paper up here. It's a 17 page paper. I think lots of that's sources. But if you look at the original uh, T5 paper, it's like 60 something pages, but it's interesting info. This is what's called an attention based model, attention based model. So if you've never worked with attention before, essentially attention is something that allows uh, certain parts of the network to concentrate on certain other parts of the network, right? So we're sending into our model, we have our model here, right? Into the model, we are sending some text. So say this, this is a test. Um, and out, we want to spit, I, I don't know, something else, right? <laughs> what we had before. Or let's, let's say we have the sentence, Rick is cool. I like the way he looks. Uh, we're just coming up with this on the spot. If we have a sentence like this, right? Context matters here. If I asked you what he is referring to, the only way to know is to look previously in the sentence, right? We have to pay attention to what came before he. And in this case, we know it's referring to Rick because we understand how grammar works and that this is referencing something else. And this is one sort of thing before recurrent neural networks were trying to solve this problem of having sequential data. This is sequential, right? Because we have one word, two words, three words, all in an order. Recurrent neural networks were trying to solve this problem. Turns out transformers work very well. And what they do is at every sort of, they get the embeddings for each of these words. And the embeddings is like a, a vector that represent a numeric vector that represents each one of these. So the vector for Rick might be like three, uh, like two, um, you know, and you just have like, I think 700 something numbers representing one word. And those embeddings are essentially transformed to be a combination of all the embeddings here, right? So the he embedding will probably take a lot from like, will be very similar to the Rick embedding because the attention will hopefully grab or pick up on the fact that he is referring to Rick. So it allows you to make those connections, which in turn ends up making up 
pretty cool models. That's that's sort of how self attention works. And if we actually, this is the original paper for transformers. Um, this is you don't have to understand this. Don't don't be overwhelmed here. You don't you don't need to know this to get through this. Uh, just for the people that are interested, I want to get through it in the beginning. You can see the inputs come in here. This is the multi-headed attention. This is what I was just talking about. It goes through an encoder layer. Once it goes through these encoder blocks, you can think of that as the encoded meaning or the latent representation of our text. And then it comes out the other side through this decoder. And this is where we output our, our new text or our translation. That's just a quick rundown of the general model. If that was confusing to you, no need to worry. We're gonna jump into implementation and I think everything should be just fine. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is install our dependencies. And sorry for that uh, large sort of thing right there, but so pip, install, transformers, sentence piece, and data sets. So these are the three libraries we will be using that are not pre-installed. Transformers is to load in this model. Sentence piece will essentially break down our text and help tokenize it. And then data sets, well, we need some data to work with, right? So that's where that comes in. So let's go ahead and install those. We'll give that a second. And while that's going, let me go down. So what do we want to do here? So the way this Transformers library works, and it's by Hugging Face, is it has a bunch of model repos. So if we go to like Hugging Face model repo, what you'll be able to see is they have all of these models we can use. And we are going to be training our own model, but we will specifically be fine tuning it, which means it's already been pre-trained on a bunch of unlabeled text, but we want to fine tune it to our task, which is machine translation. You can see they actually have the T5 uh, small, which is almost what we want. We want MT5 small for multilingual. And I happen to know what that is because I have it on a doc to the side of me. Um, so what it is, is the model repo is going to be Google slash MT5 base, not base. We're going to be doing small. The collab can only support up to a small. Even the small is very big. It's many hundreds of millions of parameters, I believe. If you pay for the pro version of collab, though, you can get this to work with a, the base model and you'll get slightly better results. Just a heads up in case you're curious. Next thing we want to go ahead and do now that we've defined that is load the tokenizer in the model. The tokenizer will help us break down our text into tokenized bits, I guess you could say. So tokenizer, uh, tokenizer equals auto tokenizer dot from, and we're going to need to import this. So I should go ahead and do that really quick. What's the import? What's the import? Maybe I'll just go ahead and import everything from transformers at once. That will probably make things easier. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and import a few things right now. So these are the imports we need for a transformer. Um, some of this we'll use later on, so don't worry about it now. I'll address it as it comes up. But the auto tokenizer for tokenizing, this will be auto model for sequence to sequence LM. Um, I think it's language modeling. Um, so it's a sequence to sequence sort of model wrapper we'll be using. The, uh, some of these other things we'll be using for training. What are some other things we'll need? We'll, we'll need the data set stuff, right? Uh, there's a function load data set we'll need. Um, I, I guess I shouldn't bore you guys. I, I, have, I have a list of all the imports, so I'll go ahead and copy them in and then maybe just address them as we go by. The, there's a lot, um, but most of these are, are fairly simple. So let's go ahead and import all those so we don't have to worry about that anymore. So that's good. So tokenizer equals auto tokenizer the dot from pre-trained. And this is a function that will go ahead and load a pre-trained model from the Hugging Face data repository or model repository. And we want to pass in this variable, model, model repo. Ooh, sometimes this will give you an error if their servers are down, just heads up. Normally it's perfectly fine though. Um, so that will go ahead and download the tokenizer model. We'll use that in one second, but let's also go ahead and download their, the model we want. So this is the model we want. Um, I have it linked here. The MT5 base, except for that's wrong. I put the wrong thing again, small, we want the small. So you can see it's pre-trained on 101 different languages. We will only be using English, which is right there, Japanese right there, and Chinese right there. No reason in particular, I just happened to find a data set for those languages. So yeah. It, it gives you a little info about the model here if you're if you are curious and i think there's some links like here yeah so we have the model um so we load it from the pre-trained repo and then we put it onto cuda this will put it onto our gpu don't bother trying this on a cpu it will take an absolute eternity uh, just a warning 
So this will take a little bit to download because it's a pretty big model, 1.2 gigabytes. While that's going though, we can go ahead and before we wrap this part of the tutorial up, what I wanna do is, you know, we won't be able to finish this in just this video, but we can go ahead, prepare a sentence like data wise, and then pass it through our model just to make sure everything's loaded up correctly. Even though we haven't trained yet, we can make sure there's no errors or anything. So, and this will hopefully give you also a general idea of what we'll be doing throughout this. So first thing, we let's let's get a sentence, right? Input sentence, and it can be, here is our test sentence. Awesome, and this is downloaded, so that's nice. So here's our test sentence, cool. What we want to do first is tokenize this, right? Um, so tokenize this, it will break each word or each sort of piece down into separate variables, and then we can eventually turn those into numbers, right? Because we need to represent everything as numbers to pass it into our neural network. So let's say token IDs equals tokenizer.encode. So encode is the function that will do this. And then we can pass in our input sentence. Uh, so if we just do this and then we print out token IDs, you'll see we should get nothing because it's broken because I spelled encode wrong. Oh my gosh. Um, input sentence, input sent. Cool. There we go. So you can see these numbers, they each represent one of the words here. This is probably here is our test sentence. Ooh, it doesn't quite match up, but we'll see why in a second. Uh, two more things we want to do here. We want to add this uh, parameter, return tensors, and set this to PT. That's for PyTorch. We will be using PyTorch. You can use TensorFlow if you want, though. It should work roughly the same. This will just return this as a tensor, and then send it to CUDA, send it over to the GPU. Um, and now if we print this, we'll see we get something very similar, except for it's on CUDA and it's a double wrapped array, a list, array, yeah, tensor. <laughs> uh, cool. So what we can do now is send this through our model, right? So model.generate, and this is the function we'll be using to generate um, this code. We won't dive into how this function works because it's pretty complicated. If that's something you'd like to go into in a future video, though, do let me know. Comments are a good way to do that. So, but we can pass in our token IDs just as is, and we will get some output. Model out. Awesome, so model out. And I know this is all very abstract right now, by the way, and very confusing. I will get to explain each part of this as we progress through these this series. So don't worry again if, if some of this is still confusing. If we print model out though, let's see what we get. We get some more numbers, awesome. Three numbers, each representing a different token. So now we can go ahead and convert these tokens back into text and see what our model has outputted for text. So we can say output text equals tokenizer.convert tokens to string. Um, and we don't have the tokens, we have the token IDs. So we also need to do tokenizer.convert IDs to tokens. And we are gonna take our model out. And if you noticed, it's wrapped in two uh, arrays here. So we'll just take the first index of that. Oop. And then print this output text. And there we go. This is our this is the text pad extra ID zero dash s. This isn't what we want, right? Um, <laughs> clearly, that is because we haven't trained it yet, right? We have this empty model that's sort of pre trained, uh, but we it doesn't know that we want to do translation, it doesn't know what it's supposed to do. It has this implicit knowledge, but we haven't told it to do anything specific yet. So before we wrap this video up, what I wanna do is tell you what we will be doing throughout the next, I think this is gonna be two more episodes after this, till we get to the end demo that you saw in the beginning. So the steps, what are the steps? Uh, the steps are, ah. Uh, one, we need to load the pre-trained model and tokenizer. We've already done this, right? We just loaded them up here. Not too bad, not too bad at all. Two, we need to load in the data set. If without any data, we can't do any training. Three, we need to transform the data set into input. Kind of like we did here, we took the token, we took this and we turned it into tokens so that we could pass it in. We need to do that with our whole data set, right? So we need to make a, a, a loader. Um, four, we need to train or fine 
tune the model on our data set. And then five, we need to test the model. And once we test, we can have our demo, try this out for ourselves, and we should be rolling. So that's the plan I've set out. Hopefully this sounds interesting to you. If it does, definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, it helps a lot. But if you, if you do wanna see these videos in the future, cause there will be more on this thread specifically, uh, subscribing is the best way to see those and clicking the bell icon never hurts too. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope to catch you next time.